In one of my other videos on this channel for perspective match with 3ds Max, Matthias had a question about creating the right camera. He explained that he tried to create a corona camera and physical camera, but those two broke his progress with setting up the perspective match for his project. Based on this and many other questions, some of which in the comments and some on my email, I have decided to answer the most recent ones in this video. The first tip is to use the right camera when virtually staging. This is equally important if you use Corona, V-Ray, Arnold or any other render engine. On my screen you see I have activated my perspective match options and I will create a new Corona camera. Notice what happens with the vanishing lines when I click on the camera icon on my Corona toolbar. The camera came up with displaced orientation and on top of that 3ds Max informs me that I have should disabled my camera target. This can be real pain if you're in a hurry. A perspective match doesn't work properly with the undo command either. Now I have to manually adjust my scene orientation and try again. Luckily I kept my standard camera and now I know where approximately should my object go. And here is the tip of the iceberg, the correct way to create camera. Open the create menu then cameras and pick create standard camera from view. Make sure you are on perspective viewport. For some reason, if you want to use the features of the Corona camera, you can apply a Corona camera modifier on top of the standard camera. First select the standard camera and then find the modifier from the modifiers drop down list. The next tip is sun and HDRI lighting. Lighting in virtual staging can be tricky, especially if you have badly lit photo to work on. Using sun is not the great idea. For the purpose of this demonstration, I will disable my lights and I will create a new Corona Sun. Almost immediately I see something is not right. The Corona Shadow Catcher does not block all the sun rays which results in excessive shadows at the places where they shouldn't appear. Even if I adjust the location or intensity and its size, the problem still persists. I will try to illuminate the scene with HDRI. In my case, I have this HDRI as a preset in my material browser. I will place the map inside the environment map slot and I will save the current render for A-B testing. A good rule of thumb is to always make a copy of your current maps and settings, in case you want to return back to your previous settings later. As you can see, illuminating virtual staging scenes with HDRI is not a good option, unless you have the exact HDRI or 360 degrees panorama from the actual location. Everything else will result in excessive noise, long render times and eventually unwanted noise. My next tip is about your background map. Here I will compare three different settings of the environment mode, screen, sphere and dome. You can render with each of them with no problem, but for those of you who want to squeeze every bit of realism in your shadows and lighting, I will suggest you to pay close attention in the next few seconds. I rendered the three images each for one minute. On top of the difference in the shadows and the lighting, which you will see in a second, you might notice the difference in the timestamps. And the first A-B testing is dome versus sphere. I hope you can see the difference in the shadows. With environment map set as dome, which is on the left, shadows are more defined and contrasty, while the sphere mode produces more blurry shadows. Next on the list is sphere versus screen. And of course, screen versus dome.
The outcome of A-B testing and comparison is that screen produces darker shadows, sphere mode gets it all wrong. I don't recommend using sphere mode unless you have the exact panoramic image of the location and dome sits in between. Do you remember the timestamps? Here is why I mentioned them. Screen gives it the slowest render times but more accurate shadows, while Dome renders the scenes with a few seconds less. This in large scenes with resolution above 4000 pixels can extrapolate in minutes. My personal advice is to plan in advance and test what is the best for your scene, but avoid rendering in sphere mode as the results are not accurate or render times are not less at all. Have you experienced color bleeding on your 3D models? This happens when there is an object with strong color on your background image which is casting colored light on your render and here is how you can avoid this problem. I painted in red my background image and added to the environment maps to demonstrate this effect. Pay close attention to the bench. This effect is called color bleeding. The red carpet casted red light on all of my objects and this gave me not accurate results. And this next tip is a bonus tip for those who have made it so far in the video. This option for off-screen color should be used with a great attention. If you use the option without a map and only as a white color, you might lose a lot of details. This is a result as the white light is equally casted on all objects. You should pay attention again mostly on the bench. My next tip is add bump. This effect will add a tiny bit of details on places where you need it. It is important to control the effect. If you use too much of it, your image will look fake. In my scene, as you can see, the floor of the room is covered in carpet. In some cases where additional bump is needed, there is a way to add a tiny amount of detail on to your render. Corona Shadow Catcher material has a section with a bump slot. You can plug your background image in this bump slot and this will produce a bump effect all across the image. To demonstrate you this, I have bumped my bump value up to 250 and even to 500. As you can see, my wall, the carpet and everything has a bump and looks awful. The trick to control this is to split your shadow catcher material in two. First, I will remove the bump value from my main material and copy, paste a second shadow catcher above the main one. Always rename your maps, this will help you identify which one what it does. I will apply the bump material only to my floor and the rest will be with the zero bump material. Not only will give you a controlled bump where you need it only, but will not add much to your render time. As you can see in the AB testing on the left, 
is the bump for option and on the right is the material without a bump. It is noticeable, it is not huge effect but still adds up to your realism. But again, be cautious while using this. You have made it till the end. Thank you so much for watching this. If you want to learn more about virtual staging, do let me know down in the comments. Please subscribe, like this and share it with your friends. And meanwhile, while I upload my next video on virtual staging, make sure to watch the video right now on the screen or down below in the comments. See you next time.